Atlas Cinema back. Another edition. How we doing out there? Good, great, gray yand, a yand. Wonderful. As you see on your screen, your dial, however you are choosing to join me today, I guess I appreciate you. <laughs> I know, I know the cast and crew and everyone involved in either making or releasing this film is definitely appreciative of, uh, you know, you guys lending me your ears today. So, as you see, one percenter, one percenter. What is one percenter? After his devastatingly fast samurai style of combat approach sets filmmakers against him, a legendary action star, Toshiro, played by Tak Sakaguchi, films his own movie on a turf claimed by feuding Yakuza gangs, including Japan's deadliest martial arts assassin. So I gotta say, uh, dude, I this is a bittersweet one. It was so good that I know that most action pieces for the rest of this year just aren't going to compare. I truly mean that. Like it, I it, I like the style in which this was done. Tak Sakaguchi, uh, a Jeet Kune Do mash, uh, master, uh, with one of the final sequences within the film versus Togo Ishii, another Jeet Kune Do master. In fact, I just learned that Togo has his own uh, YouTube channel called uh, one, the One Inch Channel, obviously referring to the One Inch Punch, uh, and gang, holy cow. <laughs> like, uh, so first and foremost, who's One Percenter? Or, uh, who's starring in One Percenter? You got Tak Sakaguchi from Versus. If you haven't seen that movie, that movie is wild. It's about every genre that you could pack into um, a movie. You got Kung Fu, Horror, Fantasy. That movie's just fucking wild. So if you haven't seen Versus uh, with Tak Sakaguchi, I believe that was his first film. Check that out. Uh, Tak was also in Death Trance, uh, Sagagaki, Oto, Oto, let's try this again, Oto Kojuguki, uh, Tokyo Gore Police, Mutant Girl Squad, uh, Born, Red Blade, Kingdom, Crazy Samurai, Prisoners of a Ghost Land, uh, Red Eyes, The Sealer, and Bad City. And I believe he was also in Crazy Samurai. I don't believe. I know he was in Crazy Samurai 400 versus 1, if you haven't seen that one. If for nothing else, check it out for just the the balls talk had in taking on a piece like Crazy Samurai uh, 400 versus 1. If you don't know anything about that film, I think it's got an 80, 85 minute one take fight sequence. So that's something you might want to tech, uh, check out. So Tak Sakaguchi, Togo Ishii, Sho Aoyagi, or Aoyagi, uh, Itsuji. This is so funny. I'm reading these names for the first time out loud. Probably should have done it beforehand, but that's what makes this show fun. You get to hear me fuck up and be the loser I am. <laughs> you got uh, Itsuji uh, Itao, Itsuji Itao, uh, Rumika Fuki, uh, Fukuda, <laughs> Rumika Fukuda, Kaizuke Horibe, Kenjiro Ishimaru, Ohi Hiroi, Hiroi Norhiza Hiranuma, I'm not doing too bad, Taro Sarugo, Sur- uh, uh, Kohi Fukuyama, and Kanan Harumi. Uh, not too many characters in this, but the characters that do have... Um, you know, more than one line of dialogue. Everyone's pretty good from the filmmaker that starts following uh, talk around. Uh, let's do some character names. But the filmmaker that starts to uh, follow Toshihiro Takuma, uh, uh, Taku, Takuma uh, around. Um, he's good in it. The girl that they rescue, she's good in it. The girl villain, who may be, like, if we're talking pure acting and pure character in the entire film, she probably takes the cake. She's the evil villain daughter of one of the Yakuza gangs. Um, we got cinematography, which was off the charts in this film, by uh, Hiroyuki Ozawa. Uh, the stunt direction and action direction by Kenzuke Sonomira. Kenzuke Sonomira. Uh, written and directed by Yudai Yamaguchi, who has done ABCs of Death, Dead Ball. Uh, I still got to see Dead Ball. Uh, Gokuru Haiki Abductee. But uh, yeah, Yudai Yamaguchi. 
the camera work in this film, the stunt direction, the sound design. I think the sound design may be one of my favorite parts. Everything is downplayed in this. Anyway, Toshira uh, Takuma is a famous action star. He has created, uh, this is the character we're talking about now, played by Tak Sakaguchi. Uh, He has created his own style called Assassination Jutsu. Uh, zero range combat and he's combined all his stuff much like Jeet Kune Do he has combined everything into a discipline that he calls wave and wave actually looks so fucking cool on on scene but so here's the deal gang uh, Toshiro wants to make a 100% real action film he thinks uh, having been on all the now that he's a tried and true action star this we do a little time jumping within the film now that he's a tried and true action star star he wants to do a 100 percent real action film but none of you know nobody who makes films wants to do that because this is people go to action films for fantasy not realism however Toshiro couldn't be more uh, on the opposite side of the fence with that in fact he is it, it would be like I feel like his character is like the Daniel Day Lewis of kung fu fighting, so he's all method. He is in, baby. He he doesn't want to do anything half assed, and everything's got to be real. If you're gonna throw a punch, it better be a fucking real punch. You're gonna throw a knee, it better be a fucking real knee. Otherwise, uh, Toshiro is gonna get fucking bored. <laughs> Um, but uh, I'll give you some brief things in here. I'm going to try to mess up the structure that I've been doing for many years on this show. And I'm going to start giving you guys some scenes uh, without spoiling too much. Um, you know, just a kind of a jumping off point. I'm going to give you some scenes set up, that sort of thing. But we're really not going to just have me blathering and doing everything but talk about the film, which I think I've done for the past few years. Is just I try to get you all fired up with my passion, but... It, it's time to switch it up, and I'm fucking bored. So anyway, it's the the movie starts on the set of another action film after uh, we are present day, because in the past we 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 kind of well no, there's more ruining shit. So it starts on the set of an, uh, another action film, and the way that it's shot and the way that it's presented to us watching One Percenter, the action film is very dull. No stylization, no sound effects as we're watching the the actors and actresses use the uh, wire play, but it plays up what the character Toshiro was saying in the beginning. Nothing's real. <laughs> you know, why, why do people want to watch this? He doesn't get it, you know. And his uh, lack of enthusiasm is noticed by producers and directors on film. And uh, the director comes over, pulls him aside, and is basically just tells him action films are popular because of fantasy, not realism. So either get your shit together or you can fucking... <laughs> fuck off and you can just tell Tashira uh, doesn't care about it doesn't care about the opinions of anyone but the flip side of that the filmmakers don't care about any of the disciplines or techniques that he's developed on his own so in fact I believe one of the producers tells uh, Tashiro like listen none of your assassination jutsu or your wave or your zero range combat shot, nobody cares about that on set we only care that if it looks good and Toshiro is uh, expectedly annoyed by the producer's uh, notes from the scene, if you will. So we bring in Akira. Akira uh, is going to go on or wants to go on to direct Toshiro's uh, new action film where everything is 100% real. And we do a little backstory here through a monologue where Akira is speaking about basically he has been trying to train with Toshiro for quite some time now, but he's just not. He's not man enough in in terms of his own, and those are his own words. Like, he couldn't keep up with the training. He couldn't keep up taking a fucking beating. But he still just finds Toshira someone that needs to, Toshiro, someone that needs to, uh, that he wants to be around. So he continues to try to train as much as he can with uh, Toshiro, uh, Akira does. Um, And they're friends, even though from the looks of it, Toshiro doesn't have any friends. He is lost in his mind. Uh, which, if you stick through it to the end, which that I'm definitely not going to ruin, I love how the end plays out. I really do in terms of kind of how Toshiro sees the world, or sees himself, rather. Um, I actually, just a side note, it's kind of funny to think that if you look this movie up on Google, 
a lot of different sites are calling it a comedy. This is one of those things where sometimes the Asian comedy hits for me, sometimes it doesn't. In terms of how it was comedic, like I laughed at the idea that mm, that would you know what? Let's ruin it. That everything's in his head. <laughs> I laughed at the idea of that, but as far as like me willing to call it a Japanese action comedy, as you will read on some other websites, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I know for a fact that I'm I'm cinema inclined, cinematically inclined enough to be able to tell when jokes are trying to be fit in and which which aren't. I didn't think that that was the case. Where I would ask some of these people calling it a comedy, where. Is it in the last 20 minutes? Because it sure as fuck ain't in the first, uh, you know, 55 minutes to an hour. It's definitely not in those sequences. There's some pieces here and there, like any action film where you have, like, a tagline or one of the villains does and says something fucking stupid that, you know, kind of puts it over and makes you hate that character more. But as far as, like, has <laughs> knee slapping and fucking Abbott and Costello shit, that's just not a thing. It should be noticed that Wave, the... Uh, should be noted the uh, the discipline wave that uh, Toshiro has made up. It's basically like Jeet Kune Do. It's everything that you've learned in mixed martial arts and incorporating it into your own thing. Who who created Jeet Kune Do, gang? Boy, I hope most of you are screaming at the fucking dashboard right now, or however you're listening to this, going Bruce Lee. You'd be fucking right. But I gotta tell you, man. Well, this make this conversation for a different day. I. As time goes on, I become less and less impressed with Bruce Lee. I know, I said it, that's fucking sacrilege. What the fuck am I saying over here? But the fact of the matter is we have, what, four, four, five films to uh, base Bruce Lee's skills on? Listen, gang, philosophically, Bruce was one of a kind and certainly one of an era during that time. However, I have seen Jackie. I have seen Jet. I have seen Donnie. I have seen Tak do things. I have even seen Iko Uwais uh, from the Raid movies do things that I've never seen Bruce do. So anyway, let's let's get out of the let's get out of the Bruce fashion because I do love Bruce Lee. I just I'm starting to feel like Bruce Lee's kind of like Tupac and Biggie in the sense where people don't want to move on to what's evolved. <laughs> I really, I, I do. Anytime I talk to someone, Bruce Lee's the best. Talk to somebody about Kung Fu film. Bruce Lee's best of all time. Eh, you kind of sound like you're saying Pac is the best of all time. And that's just not true anymore, gang. Uh, and, and here's the thing. Don't confine yourself to any one era. I mean, I'm kind of going off the rails here with this whole Tupac Biggie thing. But don't confine yourself to any one era. I have a I have a saying in my personal life, LEC, learn, evolve, contribute. I say it to my chick all the time. I say it to myself all the time. And this, it, 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 put it to you this way. You can't trust a person who listens to the same music they did in high school. So if you can kind of make that leap with me, how I was talking about Bruce Lee and you can't trust anyone who listens to the same music all the time that they did in high school... Hopefully you can make that leap. Anyway, that's Wave. <laughs> um, Akira is able to find some financing for this 100% real action film for Toshiro. However, his his financing looks a little shady. The man that they get the financing uh, from looks a little fucking shady. But nevertheless, they get the financing. Guess what? They're being sent to an island seemingly claimed by the Yakuza. They get sent to an island to shoot their 100% real action film, which is claimed by the Yakuza. You can see where this is going, right, gang? (laughs) Um, But anyway, Toshiro is about ready to get to make the action film. Toshiro is about to get ready to make the action film that he's been waiting 10 years to make. So... Let's go through some of these action pieces here. Tell me, uh, tell you a little bit about what I liked. And it's such a bummer because I know I'm not going to see anything for the rest of the year like this. Unless fucking uh, the Raid 3 is going to come out and we just didn't know about it or something. I, I don't know. But I, <clears throat> I'm confident I will not like uh, action sequences that are within this 
I, I don't see me liking anything more. It, in terms of an action direction, action choreography, uh, camera work, and everything clicking on all cylinders, I don't think it's possible this year, gang. In fact, uh, when, well, let's just get into it. So we have this first meeting with some low-level low level Yakuza's. Um, the way that he disarms these cats is about as effortless and as clean as it can be. Everything is downplayed. The sound, uh, sound design is downplayed. I love that more than anything. I don't need to hear. I don't need to hear every five seconds. Sometimes. Yeah, it's fine. Sometimes the film warns it, but the precedent has already been set by the time we get to this first action sequence that it is going to be basically the sounds of the sleeves on jackets and, and coats and shirts. Um, make a note. You're not going to hear these thuds that reverberate throughout your uh, uh, surround sound system. Ain't it going to happen. Um, but the way that he disarms these first yak- Yakuza's as he's talking shit as he's going along, it's it's so fun to watch. Um, next great uh, fight sequence we have is within the scrawling stairwells of this abandoned factory. See, we get sent to an island owned by Yakuza, and it's got things for Tak Sakaguchi and the rest of the crew to play with. So a fight within the scrawling stairwells of an abandoned factory. The camera work here is so spot on, and we continue with the tone that we've set throughout the movie. Everything's downplayed. Everything is subtle. Everything is sharp. It's all clean, and and that's just a testament to the way Tak Sakaguchi moves. It's not like anything you've really seen before. Of course you've seen different mixed martial arts and disciplines on screen, of course you have. I'm not. You're not going to. See, there is some creativity within this film, which I will get to here in a moment, that you've never seen before. But in terms of like fight sequence, like I mean, come on, guys. If you've if you've watched as many kung fu films as I have, it is so hard. And again, we'll get there in a second for me to see style because I'm to the point now where I can notice all different styles on screen. Uh, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing because I can't do this shit. So basically, like, I'm just an armchair kung fu expert. I can just point at my screen like the Leo meme and be like, I know that discipline that they're using right now. Outside that, don't know how to use it in real life. So I am a piece of shit. (laughs) I just go, hey, oh, that's fucking Hungar. Oh, hey, that's Jeet Kune Do. Oh, hey, that's just traditional Muay Thai. If uh, nobody's gonna pay me for being able to notice <laughs> different disciplines on on fucking film, but anyway, everything's so clean in this sequence. He uses all eight of his weapons. If you aren't aware of the eight weapons that are on the body, seek Muay Thai. Anyway, th- one of my favorite bits within this scene is amongst his uh, subtle. Um, um, choreography in here. He also, uh, of course, everyone gets disarmed with their, you know, AK 47s and everything. But one of the things that I found most fun is he, uh, ejects one of the magazine clips from the AK 47 and uses it as a weapon, not in the sense that you think it is. It's more about to debilitate, um, the, the the villains just like it's more or less about to stun or give a charlie horse or hit bone he's not using it to kill and maim which is what i another part of this film that i love is you're not going to see an obscene amount of gore in say like that you saw in like the night comes for us everything is downplayed to the max but him hitting pressure points with a magazine clip in making it look as effortless as he does, oh, it's so fun to watch. (laughs) So fun to watch. Um, And then, like, as if the the magazine clip wasn't good enough, he picks up a wrench along the way. And again, he's not cracking people's fucking skulls. It's more about disarming, disorienting, and, uh, you know, here's here's a broken kneecap for your troubles. It's not this blood fest that you may think when someone says yeah there's a kung fu fighter with a wrench (laughs) you know when you hear that you think oh man somebody's head is getting caved in (laughs) uh side note around this part 
And I haven't decided if I'm angry or I'm trying or if if this should be more comedic to me than it actually is. But by this point in the film, they're calling Toshiro, played by Tak Sakaguchi, Jackie, as in Jackie Chan. Like they keep like there's some um, walkie talkie uh, communication between Tak after he picks it, uh, Toshiro, the character rather, um, picks it up from one of the fallen Yakuza henchmen, and he's talking to one of the bosses, and they and they keep calling him Jackie. On the one hand, I really don't, f- I hope you're not making fun of Jackie Chan, because that boy in his heyday is one of the craziest motherfuckers to have ever have lived. So this whole like, oh, maybe Jackie doesn't know how to actually fight and he's you know trained by the Chinese ballet and blah 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 (sighs) jump off a fucking building like Jackie does jump into a fucking pillar of lights and slide down the light this I'm not saying that Tak Sakaguchi isn't more of a killer than Jackie Chan I don't know that I like you making fun now if I were to talk to the filmmakers and they were like No, we weren't making fun. It's an homage to Jackie. We fucking love Jackie Chan. And it's like, well, by about the fifth time that it's fucking mentioned, you start to wonder. (laughs) You start to wonder if... I I kid you not, I looked over at my chick at one point and was like, do these people have beef with Jackie Chan? Because this isn't fucking funny anymore. And, you know, maybe I'm I'm such a Jackie Chan homer that (laughs) that I, I I was taking it a little too serious. But... I don't know, gang, you be the judge and fucking DM me and tell me what you think. Anyway, in the previous fight within the uh, stairwells of the factory, he uh, confiscated uh, a flashlight. So, as the next fight scene ensues, the flashlight makes an appearance and Tak Sakaguchi uses it in a way that makes it now hear me. I, I'm not going to say I'm an expert on everything, or on anything, anything. I'm not an expert on anything. But I have seen quite a few action films in my day. What happens next might be one of the most creative fight scenes I can think of in recent memory, gang. I know, and for those of you who listen to the show or just know me in real life, Doesn't that just make you want to go out and get one percenter right now? Because if you know if I'm saying one of the most creative fights in recent memory, it's got to be good. And it is. The way that Tak is able to keep the same tone that he has previously, and by tone I just mean that subtle, sharp, clean. We don't don't start to go off the rails um, as the film goes on, as a lot of action films do. We just eventually just kind of shit the bed and... Then it becomes about car chases and explosions and people getting tossed off fucking buildings and shit like that. The way that he is able to keep this tone or the tone that he's already set previously in the uh, prior scenes with this flashlight and how he uses it to his advantage to take out about 15 fucking Yakuza members. Oh, chef's kiss. <laughs> chef's fucking kiss. It's nothing short of amazing. I mean, if you're an action film fan, it, it it's probably something you've never seen before. And from a filmmaking aspect, the choice for uh, Yudai Yamaguchi to use traditional action music, you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Using traditional action music at the start of of the, well, let's just call it the flashlight fight, at the start of the flashlight fight to what he chooses towards the end with a classical composer, almost as if he's making music. He is doing a fight dance, which is kind of funny because he hates when uh, Toshiro's character, Tak Sakaguchi's character, Toshiro, hates when action films look like dances. They should look real. They should look violent. But in this sequence, we go from, like I said, traditional action music to a very classical uh, uh, music piece. Oh, it fits so good. The editing here is so good. Like, I I literally, 
and, and this is the first time uh, when, the first time I was watching it because now I've watched it two or three times I can't remember but the first time watching it, I even was like I leaned over my chick I'm like hey I'm sorry I have to rewind that and watch it again it was that good and most of the time I don't do that through first run throughs on a film I, I like it I, I don't like ruining momentum I hate pausing stopping starting all that other shit I actually rewound it and watched it again my first run through which is a sacrilege thing to do for me at least if you know me you know i don't do that thing so you know that's how goddamn good (laughs) that fucking fight sequence was like i just i was just like oh oh my god oh oh cam and (laughs) anyway um before we get to uh our final action piece i would like uh one of our final action pieces i do want to say after the flashlight fight, somewhere in between the flashlight fight and the final action sequence, there is a there is two great pieces of acting by the females involved in this. One, the they're both daughters of Yakuza. One's good, one's bad. And I got to tell you, the bad one just puts on a clinic, and so does the good one. You have this pull between good and evil that up until that point we weren't getting like we were kind of getting hammy. Acting, whether it be from the crew who tells Toshiro that he's shit, basically, or some of the um, Yakuza prior, like it, it, it plays like an action film. But in this one, then it gets like deadly serious <laughs> for a moment, and I just wanted to make sure to shout out both those actresses because I, I was like, damn, dude, this we got dark in a hurry. Like this was very, very lighthearted for the most part like you're just kind of like oh this guy really wants to shoot his fucking action film and he wants to do it real and now we're invested in these two girls that are caught up in a yarn that they don't want to be in one was born into it molded by it and the other said no fuck that i don't i don't want to be a part of my dad's business that ends in fucking jail or death so no Anyway, shout out to them too now comes their final fight sequence between tak sakaguchi and togo ishi holy man Holy shit. <laughs> so good. It's amongst some of the cleanest, most downplayed action sequences you will ever see. And technically, from a technical aspect, it's firing on all cylinders. The camera work, the sound design, and of course the choreography that takes place throughout this. Nothing short of spectacular. I love Anytime we can mix it up and we just kind of use little things that um, perhaps break down another fighter. No spoilers here, but just little shit. I don't need a fucking crescendo of music when we've disarmed the final villain or anything like that. I just need... Hey, we acknowledge that the fight is about to take a turn and then we just fucking do it. Oh, gang. Please go get this movie right now. If you can stream it on Haya, stream it wherever you want, or get the Blu-ray. Um, I will be doing a Blu-ray giveaway for this one. Uh, it, well Go USA's release of One Percenter is out now. Again, Well Go USA's release of One Percenter is out now. No excuses, gang. If you've been following me from the jump, it's one of the best action films I've seen in years. I would put it up there, top 50. If we're talking, let's say, just in the last decade, top 50, just based solely on its execution. At the end of the day, the story is what it is. You don't, it's it's a rarity when you get a good combination of story um, and action choreography. Um, and it's not to say that this story is shit. Like I said, wait till the ending where you can kind of choose your own adventure in terms of what's going on in Toshiro's head. But. Um, it's one of my favorites in the past decade, and it's a testament to its execution and it being like a real fight. You know, when, when you hit somebody in a real fight, it doesn't fucking reverberate off the fucking walls in which you're fighting in. It is a very just, oh, I can't do it. I'm fucking, I got a microphone, but I was about ready to try to. <laughs> show you what a punch really sounds like anyway one percenter is available now is available now by Wellgo usa one percenter starring tak sakaguchi togo ishi sho aoyogi isuji itayo rumika fukuda 
Kaizuke Horibe, Kenjiro Ishimaru, Ohi Hiro, Norhiza Hiranuma, Taro Saruga, Kohai Fukuyama, Kanan Harumi. Ooh. Cinematography by Hiroyuki Ozawa. And of course, that stunt direction and action direction by Kenzuke Sonomura. Written and directed by Yude Yamaguchi. Holy cow. Tak Sakaguchi can do no wrong. One percenter. Well go USA. Streaming and available now. No excuses, gang. All I can tell you is you guys are about to get so upset with the amount of kung fu movie episodes I'm about to release. <laughs> and I don't give a shit. Ellis Cinema, we go.